Hey Nathan here, welcome back to another Monogame Advanced video. In the last video we discussed matrix transformations and just by doing that we fixed the rectangular collision detection. Now we need to fix the per pixel collision detection and it's not going to be as easy I'm afraid. So this is the, I created a new project with all the previous tutorials code and I put it in this new project and I updated all the namespaces and then everything is correct. So what we need to focus on in this video is it's going to be primarily pretty much 99% of the video will be in this per pixel collision method. So right now we have it set to return true because if we do it that way it's a rectangular collision detection. Now let's set this to back to return false. Because we want it to return false if it does not return true in the loop. Okay, so now we need to discuss matrix transformations. So let me bring up screen drawing here. We have one sprite. Oh, that's a box. I don't want to draw a box. We have one sprite. Our sprite that we are that this class belongs to. You know, this. This object is a sprite and then we're passing another sprite for collision. And we want to check to see if those two have collided in the per pixel collision method here. So we have two sprites. We're going to call this sprite A is equal to this Sprite B is equal to target. So Sprite A, let me bring up screen drawing here. I'm going to set up color as black. So Sprite A is going to be black. That's Sprite A. And Sprite B is going to be red. That's going to be down here. So that's Sprite B. So that is B. Let me bring this back to black. So black here, we have 1 comma 1. This is 0 comma 0. 0 comma 1. 1 comma 0 and this is 1 comma 1. So this here is 1 comma 1 when we're looking at A. On red on the other hand, red has its own 1 comma 1. So let me draw that here as well. So this is red's 1 comma 1. So they are not the same. If I'm looking at A and I say, what's at pixel 1 comma 1? That's right at the top. That's the black one. That's right here. If I'm looking at B and I ask B, what's your color at 1 comma 1? B is going to return, it's this. For this video, I'm going to choose A, this object. I'm going to choose this object as the source. I'm going to loop through every single pixel in the source, and I'm going to find what that color is in the target. But when I get to 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, any pixel in A, I need to transform it to whatever B sees. So what I need to do, B needs to recognize that we are not looking at 1 comma 1. We are looking at, it's going to be positive X, but it's going to be negative Y. 
So that obviously cannot exist in our texture. Our texture is positive only, and it can't go larger than the width of our texture, and it can't go larger than the height of our texture. So it has to be positive, and it has to be within the width and the height of our texture. If it is not, we can safely just continue on to the next pixel. So A's 1, 1, that is outside of our texture. That is positive, let's say 30, negative 58, for example. The Y is negative, so we don't need to test that. So what does all this mean? We need to get 1, 1 from A. We need to convert it to world space which will be, you know, here's the game window. I'm going to draw the game window as uh, green. So here's the game window. So 1, 1 on A, we need to get that in the world space, which is positive X, positive Y. You know, it's like 40, 35 or something. And then we need to convert it to B, which will then be a positive X and negative Y value. So that means we need to do matrix calculations to go from A space to B space. All right, so let's get rid of these two lines here. So the general formula to get a matrix that goes from A space to B space is the following. We have relative to B, that's the 1 comma 1 here, times transform B is equal to relative to A is equal to, or times transform A. Or, if we need to find the relative to B, which we'll do in this case, we need to get Relative to A is going to be 1, 1. We know transform B, and we know transform A, and we know relative to A. So we need to get relative to B. That's the only unknown. So simple algebra, relative to B is equal to relative to A times transform A times, and just like in algebra, what you do on one side, you need to do on the other side. To get rid of this, we multiply it by the invert of that transform. So we need to multiply the right side by the invert of transform B. That is the only unknown, and this is the formula to get this. Now, if you want to save this for later use, Relative to B, uh, let's just call it A to B, is equal to transform A times invert transform B. And then, let's get rid of that. And then relative to B is equal to relative to A times A to B. So if we want to save this for later use, and that's what we'll be doing because we're going to use a two for loops, then we just multiply it by the relative to A value, and that will give us our relative to B. All right, so let's go ahead and generate that. Matrix, uh, let's put that right next to the comments. A to B is equal to underscore transform where it's a transform for A, remember A is this object, times matrix dot invert target dot underscore transform. B is going to be the target. So that's A to B. Now, just like what we did for the other per pixel collision detection algorithm, we need to get the color values, the source colors and the target colors. So I'm just going to copy and paste that since we discussed that before. Okay. 
we're going to loop through, let me bring up screen drawing again here. A is here. A is the black object. We're going to loop through every single pixel in A. So we're going to increase one, increase one, increase one, and so on, so on, so on. And then the next column, increase one, and so on, and so on, and so on, and so on. Next column, increase one. So the columns and rows are going to increase by one. But how will that work for our B? How will that work for our target? We need to create a way to step in the X and Y direction for our target. And that's going to be a vector 2. Vector 2 step X. And that's going to be a vector 2 because we can use the unit X vector for stepping in X and unit Y vector for stepping in Y. So vector 2 step X is equal to vector 2 dot transform normal vector 2 dot unit X comma A to B. Unit X is 1 comma 0. We're increasing X by 1 in A. So we need to convert that to B space. It, it possibly could also include a Y component. Vector 2 step Y is equal to vector 2 dot transform normal vector 2 dot unit Y comma A to B. Okay, screen drawing again. Black. Here's our box. We are going to start at 0 comma 0 in A. But what is that in B? We need to calculate the initial position in B. So vector 2 target position is equal to vector 2 dot transform, not transform normal, vector 2 dot 0. So we're using transform instead of transform normal. And then we have comma A to B. So let's take a quick second to take a look at these transform normal and this transform call. We have vector 2 dot unit x, vector 2 dot unit y, and vector 2 dot 0. Look at the equation here. Relative to a times a to b gives us relative to b. So we are satisfying that formula. Relative to a is this. 1 comma 0 is our step in A, so we need to convert it A to B, which will give us relative to B. Same thing with the step Y and the target position. All right, so now we need to have two for loops. And I'm not going to create an intersecting rectangle. That will probably be a later video. For now, I'm just going to loop through every single pixel in A. Four int x is equal to 0. We're going to loop through the x in the outer loop. x is less than underscore texture dot width. We're looking at the texture data here. So we can't go farther than the texture's width. x plus plus. So that is the outer loop. Now we need to have a copy. We only want to just like x and y, we have a 4 int y. Those are going to be separate values. And they're going to update separately. So we need to do the same thing for b. Vector 2 current position is equal to, and let's start it at the target position here, is equal to target position. So that's going to hold the target's position. And we're just going to uh, call that current position. Uh, you can call it current target position. That might be easier. So current target position 
is equal to target position. All right, now let's have the inner for loop. For i and t, y is equal to zero. Y is less than underscore texture dot height, and then y plus plus. Now we need to get the actual values in the array. So array needs integer values. A vector has floating point values for x and y. So we need to cast those as int. Int target x is equal to cast as an int current target possession dot x. Int target y is equal to cast as int current target position dot y. Those need to be integer values. We do not need to test anything for the sources values because it's always going to be doing it's always going to be between zero and the width or zero and the height. So it is always guaranteed to be within the texture. But like we saw in the initial drawing that I did, it, it's possible for B to be trying to find a texture, a color value that isn't even close to its texture. So we need to check to see if this is inside of our textures array. If target x is greater than zero, we cannot have negative values. And target x is less than target dot underscore texture dot width. And target y is greater than or equal to zero. That should be greater than or equal to zero. Greater than or equal to zero. Again, we cannot have negative values. And target y is less than target dot underscore texture dot height. So what we are checking here, target x has to be greater than or equal to zero. We cannot have a negative value. We can have zero. An array in C sharp starts at zero. You can have an index of zero in an array. Target x has to be less than target dot underscore texture dot width. It cannot be larger than the width of our texture. Then it is outside of our bounds. Target y has to be greater than or equal to zero. Same thing. Target y has to be less than the height of our texture. And that's the same thing. If that is satisfied, that means that texture exists. That point exists in our texture. Now we can compare our color values. Color. Color source is equal to source colors, opening bracket, x plus y times underscore texture dot width. And just like I explained when we did the first initial per pixel collision detection. This is the math to get the, we're looking at it, it's a double array because we have X and Y, but we're looking at it as a single array value. So we need to do some additional math to get the correct point in that array. And that is the math to do that. This is not a double array object. It is a one-dimensional array. So now we need to do the same thing for the target color. Color. Color target is equal to target colors, opening bracket, target x plus target y times target dot underscore texture dot width. So that gives us our two color values, and just like before, we need to compare the alpha values or whatever you want to do to determine if there's a collision. 
color source dot a does not equal to zero and color target dot a does not equal to zero. If that is satisfied, we return true. Right before the inner for loop ends, right before this closing bracket here, this is right before the inner for loop ends, we need to step in the Y. This inner for loop steps in the Y for our source. We need to do the same thing for our target. Current target position plus equals step Y. We are looping through the current position that we made in the outer for loop. Now, right before the outer for loop ends, we need to do the same thing. The outer for loop steps in the X for the source. We need to do the same thing for the target. But we want to update our target position, not our current target position. So our target position plus equals step x. Now if we simply press F5 and run our code, it should be working. And there we go. That is how you do transformed per pixel collision detection. Like I said, I did not create a intersecting rectangle in this video. We'll probably look at something to speed this up a little bit more in the future. But you get the idea of this is a pretty... It's much different than what we did before because we are throwing in matrix transforms into the equation. So that's it for the matrix transformation series. I hope you enjoyed it. The first video was we discussed matrix transformations and that automatically fixed the rectangular per pixel collision or rectangular collision detection. So we did not need a dedicated rectangular collision detection video. So I hope you enjoyed this video and the previous video, and I'll see you next time.